From Kruma Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research's Solar Photovoltaic Module Testing Lab, built on-site at its campus in Pretoria, boasts equipment, expertise and capacity to undertake accelerated reliability stress testing on PV modules to ensure their quality and reliability. Tasneem Babulia has a story. This testing aims to ensure that only high-quality modules are developed and installed and that the modules perform optimally for the duration of their lifespan. CSIR PV testing technologist Siasanga Innocent May expands. This is a, our first, very first in Southern Africa. The test infrastructure that we offer to the market in this end is a, it's a solar PV quality and reliability. We are testing a lot of PV products that are commercially available in, I say, globally. You're ranging from the multi-crystalline, monocrystalline, as well as cartel on thin film technologies. May outlines the testing capabilities of the lab, the clients it undertakes these for, and how long these tests take. On this particular side that we are currently sitting on, this is our sun simulator. We use that to do performance measurements. We are measuring the PV module, what it what, how much performance does it at initial post from coming from the other side of the section. There we put a PV module on environmental chambers. We thermally stress the PV module, have it measured this end, and then we take it to that side, we apply thermal effects to the PV module or we change the environment drastically. Some of the equipment there, they range from negative 40 degrees C to 85 degrees C at a humidity level of 85%. Then there we are inducing some thermal challenges or thermal stresses to the PV module. We expect it to lose some power. We bring it back to this side where we have a sun simulator, then we quantify how much the PV have lost. We have mechanical load tester as well that side. That introduces some vibration to the PV is meant to do snow load, wind simulations. Then that as well does introduce micro cracks. We have an EL station where we validate what was the EL image prior the test and what is the EL image after the test. We bring the PV module to this side and then we do another performance measurement. How much power have we lost through to the introduction of those cracks? We've got both local and internationally. A lot of PV plants that are in our country, some are run by local people, some are international partners. They are sending their product every now and then to us for us to test. So we are serving both locally and international clients. We are accredited with 16 test methods. Capacity will depend on their request. Some PV manufacturers or PV installers might send bunches of PV modules. Depending on the test scope, our tests are running lengthy, some. And this one, this is interthenous. We have, a, we load a PV module within seven minutes. There is a power measurements, the results that are done. On the other section of the lab, some tests do require maybe a three month, but remember we are not loading only one PV module on, on the test. The, the loading capacity is 12, so depending on the test request as well, if there is a damp heat request, then we should expect a longer time frame because of the request for test. Remember the test now, we are trying to ramp up and simulate what should have happened within the 25 lifetime period of a PV module within a fraction of months, so I would say minimum is three months. May outlines the process of the lab coming to fruition and its importance for the country and the region. It's gonna be, it has been commissioned section by section, so it's a cascaded site. This was, was commissioned in 2018, then the, 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 the thermal chambers and the MLT were commissioned a year later. There is a relevance of this to the PV market in Southern Africa. We've got a lot of PV modules that are currently emerging to the our national grid, some are connected, some are not, and then we are here to do a quality and reliability testing to check how much are those in terms of performance, how much are those in relation to the nameplate ratings and all of the performance related, as well as the PV plants that are already commissioned as well. They do send their product to us and then we quantify and measure. Maybe they have some OM, which is operation and maintenance plans, to check how much power they are, their PV modules are using on a yearly basis. Then we do such tests and then they quantify their results as well. Your PV manufacturers will promise a 25 year lifetime of a PV module, which meaning which their PV module is expected to perform or to perform a specific range of power for that duration. That doesn't always happen. Remember, they are transit, they, they are shipment that are happening. You buy it from somewhere, it gets transported to Pretoria. They are vibration that are happening within transit. The product that we buy, that you bought then, is no longer 
the actual product that is on the site. There has been some challenges and difficulties all the way to the plant. And the, even the companies, they are not going to be there for the whole 25 year period. But now there is a, this infrastructure here in CSIR. You can then come in and then we test the PV module. We compare with what was promised on the contractual arrangement, whether it was an implant rating or the design. And then we say if they, prof they promise a 25 year period, but then now can we speed up and ramp up such within a short duration, meaning which we measure degradation faster than 25 year period. And then you can have some insurance claims if there were any, if the product really comes short from the promise. May also touches on the challenges that the lab has had to overcome. I think that's general. There is a ramp up change in technology. There are a lot of new PV modules that are coming in to the market. So as the, the lab infrastructure have to meet up with the change, we've got bigger modules that are quite bigger than this unit at the moment that are coming in. So we have to ramp up our infrastructure to match up the, the need in the market. But we still have some relevancy because some of the, of maybe lost most of the PV modules, they still fit to some of our equipment, but we are in a plan to procure more of bigger equipment to compensate or to match up the need because there is a line with the production as well as applying with the change in technology. Meanwhile, the CSIR has also built an array of solar PV plants around its campus in Pretoria. The power that is generated from these feeds directly into the CSIR's campus grid and therefore some of it is used to power the solar PV testing lab. That's Quilo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.